everybody, it's Tyler here at Vex Rules checking in. Middle school team 2915E Slipstream. This team coming in from New Zealand, Triple Crown at New Zealand Nationals. Congratulations on your awesome success so far that you had it here. Looking really good, by the way, as we're filming this 4 0 right now uh, here in their division. So let's take a look at Slipstream, what they have to offer here. Uh, a lot of great stuff as we go through. Uh, talking about some of their philosophy, how they made changes to be a better alliance partner as well. So I'm excited to talk more about that. And then we'll be going through that tri ball journey, right? Talking about many different aspects of the robot. Uh, rocking a great uh, high tier hang as well, too, which we haven't seen as much in middle school teams. So I'm excited to talk more about that, as well as many other great things coming up here on Pits and Parts. This video on fun is brought to you by viewers like you and also in partnership with the following. The Robotics Education and Competition Foundation provides fantastic programs for students from elementary school all the way through college. These include VEX, Aerial Drone Competition, Online Challenges, JROTC, Grow Powered, Scholarships, Certifications, and so much more. To discover these exciting opportunities, visit recf.org and get connected. Real, let's talk about some of your design philosophy on here. You mentioned that you made some changes uh, throughout the season to be a better alliance partner. I'd love to hear more about that. Right, so for alliance partners, we we go to our alliances early game in the in the, in the match or the quote scrimmage, and then we go to our alliances and go talk to them. We want to see their design and how and what they have. We tell them what we have before they tell us what they have. So. We can fix our quote strategy against our opponent alliances. Will uh, that influence your design at all? Like coming, you know, into nationals and the Vex roles, has that influenced like how you change your design over to competitions? Uh, we watch a lot of signature events, which help us make new designs and adapt to the new strategies that have been coming out. We also do need to cope with our alliances. So we adapt our like base strategy to cope with their way of driving, I guess. Very cool. As we start to move in the throw, let's pass over to Henry, talk more about on the uh, intake side of things as well too. Henry, as we talked earlier, uh, you made a lighter intake coming in the, yeah. here in the Vex world. So I'd love to hear more about that. And then I will be moving into your drivetrain as we kind of follow this journey through. All right. So with our intake, we've had a lot of different designs. Um, we eventually settled on this design though, mainly because of how versatile it is. It's very good for bowling, and it's also very light, which um, helps us save our weight for our, our drivetrain acceleration. Um, so with our with our weight saving, we used to have a much bulkier intake with the intake motors being uh, more around here, so far, a lot farther out from the center of the robot. Um, this was really bad because it made our, our turning a bit slower because we got more centrifugal force uh, so we ended up moving the motors all the way down to, to here on the intake and then we chained them uh, to the intake there instead of gearing them. Uh, we also use this plastic here instead of C-channel because it's also just lighter, so it saves more weight. Um, we chose this flex wheel configuration here instead of having uh, an, a lot of evenly spaced flex wheels. We have one just in the center because it makes the bowling a lot easier. When we put our tribal in the top of the intake like this, it only touches one of the flex wheels, so the flex wheel doesn't need to compress as much in order to get the tribal out. So it can make our bowling a lot faster and more efficient. Have you done anything for your intake in regards to like trying to not have the tribals pop out? Should you take a big hit or anything like that? Uh, we do have this thing here, which is, um, it kind of helps the tribal when it rides up here. Instead of rolling all the way up to the top here, it, it just gets stopped here, so then it doesn't it doesn't like fly out the back of our robot. Can we usually. intake a tribal yeah. and see what that looks like? Uh, yeah, we can. If we... So it stops the tribal there, so then yeah. the tribal doesn't go flying up the, the robot. Because it's kind of, it, it's counterintuitive. It kind of acts like a ramp sometimes, even though it's supposed to be our hang it. If, if we didn't have that there, this would the tribal would just roll straight up. We'll just go with that. was all part of the plan the entire time. I'm yeah, good with that. Yeah. So talk to me about your uh, drivetrain. What are you running? So with our drivetrain, we're running 450 RPM, 3.25 inch wheels. Uh, we've got four wheels on each side of the drivetrain. Um, in the center here, we have these this raised uh, custom flex wheel here, which we just cut out the inside of a flex wheel, and then we put a size four gear, I believe that is, on the inside. And then we also have this uh, traction wheel here, the 2.75 inch traction wheel, which is also raised off the ground. Um, the main reason we have such a weird wheel configuration is for our barrier hop. We found that um, 
with the Omni wheels, with all 3.25 Omni wheels, our barrier hop was a lot slower and less consistent. So we decided to raise some of the middle wheels and change them to uh, more traction type wheels so then we could get a much faster and consistent barrier hop. Um, tying into that barrier hop as well, we actually have these sleds here, which are tangent sleds. So they're, they connect with one point on the wheel. So that uh, lets us roll easily from the bar onto the wheels really quickly, which, and so instead of jumping over the bar, we kind of um, like smoothly ride onto it and then go over it as if it wasn't there almost. So here we got to talk about as we go into this F tier hang that your team has on this, you're rocking a PTO for it as well too. So let's show how that works. Love to see a demo as well too of your uh, climber as well. Anything else you want to cover in your robot yeah, sure. too? Um, well, before we talk about the climb itself, we should talk about our little experience we had. Sure. We decided to go to high school welds and watch as many of the games as we possibly could. One, to support our sister team and scout for them, and two, just to learn and see what we could do. We noticed the difference between a really consistent high hang and a really inconsistent high hang. It was just how safe it was and how much they put into making it just work. Most people just focus on the, the, the going up really fast bit, but with this one, we made sure to focus on it actually working. So if you see here, we want to make sure it doesn't ever come out in the game because at that point it makes it almost unmonable to win. It makes it impossible to win. Well, it's hard. So we have two locks here. Both with one there's a little screw contacting the standoff, making sure the second stage doesn't like beat up. And then under here is a little uh, yeah a screw forcing the bottom stage not to come out as well, making sure we have no chance of the mech actually flying out. We also have code that makes sure that the locks don't come out at the very last 15 seconds. So if a driver misplaces a button, it will it won't come out. So if we activate the lift right now, uh, okay. you can see how it comes out. It comes uh, actually, I won't explain that. That's a little bit too much for me. Can't be bothered. Um, we if you look in the pit, well the inside of the winch hang itself, you can notice this little mesh of non-slip. This is to cover all of our pneumatics and make sure the string doesn't have a chance of getting caught up in it. We also have this battery placed here that acts sort of as like a little net to hold all the string. We just want to make sure that our string would never would never come out or get displaced or get stuck in the drive. And that also ties into how we make sure the string stays straight. So instead of just pulling it through this little hole here, we pull back the entire lift. It lines up into a massive, yeah, it lines up into the massive straight little line. And then we can push it back. Oh, and push it back. And then boom. The line, the string is almost perfectly straight, which makes sure it doesn't tangle. So now we can talk about our other hang. We've used this in every single qualification because it's just faster and more consistent. We only want to use this hang if it's really important to use it because it just takes so much time. So this one, this little non-slip underneath, when we slide up onto the bar, it quickly gets us on and make sure we have grip onto the bar itself so we don't slide off after the qualification. It helps, really, it's very useful because it lets us play defense or score right before we need a hang and get a quick 20 points or 15 points depending on the tiers. And with that, we can talk about how the lift locked at the very top. Since we went with F tier geometry, it, the, the lift finishes exactly how it looks right here. So it lets the locks come back down if we want, right? It also, the entire lift is operated by this PTO, I forgot to mention. Can you click it up? Yeah. So if we look, this is stage one. During the entire game, the PTO is usually at, like, at this position right here, which if you notice, the gear can't shift at all. Well, it can slightly shift, but it's stuck in between a little nylon here, which makes sure it can't either A, come out, well, like, it basically locks the entire winch at like, and it just takes so much force like it'll stay in no matter what so when we're hanging itself when we get to the peak point we activate our locks and we activate this at the same time which essentially locks us on one two three four points of protection making sure we don't clip off or slam off at all we just made sure that this hang was as consistent and as safe as possible so if we do use it in the match it will work instead of watching it fail not getting a hang in the first place and then losing the game so mostly this robot was just built around consistency and making sure that we are always the same. We have a checklist just to make sure that we are the same. We have around, what, 25 things on it from being pumped up all the way to if this rubber band right here is a little stretched. Because we've noticed if you're not consistent, it's just going to be a lot harder to like, win. It'll be different for the driver, different for the coder, and different for the builder to handle. So the main thing about this slipstream robot is just to be consistent. Yep. That's basically it. Well, and that climb, I'm sure, will come into play. Should we get in the playoffs as well, too? We'll start Hopefully. to see more yeah. of that as well, too. Yeah, but yeah. Slipstream, congratulations on a great season. Wish you best of luck here. Thanks for telling us so much about your team. There's a lot of great yeah. things teams can learn from, and we can't wait to see how you do here at Vectral. So good luck the rest of the way. Thank you. 
This video on fun is brought to you by viewers like you and also in partnership with the following. The Robotics Education and Competition Foundation provides fantastic programs for students from elementary school all the way through college. These include VEX, Aerial Drone Competition, Online Challenges, JROTC, Girl Powered, Scholarships, Certifications, and so much more. To discover these exciting opportunities, visit RECF.org and get connected. Don't forget to like, subscribe, and ring the bell to stay up to date on our new videos. Keep the conversation going and provide your input to our content. Most live shows can be found on the First Updates Now YouTube channel, live competitions at twitch.tv slash firstupdatesnow, and join our Discord at discord.gg slash firstupdatesnow. Check our other social offerings on TikTok, Instagram, Facebook, and Twitter.